Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. This is our second video in the Wix tables series. And in the previous video, we talked a bit about the basics of adding a table and connecting it to a data set. And today I'm going to show you something really short and really simple, but also extremely useful, which is how to add filters to your table uh, using a dropdown and connecting it to your data set with zero velo code. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, let's get started. Okay, so in order to get some filters set up for this table, the first thing we're going to want to do is add a drop down to our website. So I'm going to go ahead and look for input right over here. And I'm going to select a drop down input. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to our site. And this drop down is going to help us filter by the gender of whatever we have here in the table. Okay, and this is just an example, you can set up other filters for other things as well. Um, but the gender is something where we'll have several options. So it's not something like email or last name and first name, which will be completely unique between different people. Uh, gender, we're likely to have a lot of common denominators that we can filter by. Uh, so if I go here to my drop down, I'm just going to add in some of the genders that we will likely have in this table. Uh, so I'm just going to be adding in here male, and I'm going to add in female. And there are other um, genders in this table, but I'm just going to be adding those two for the purpose of this demonstration. And I'm going to change the design of our drop down just so you can see it a little better. So the drop down list for some reason is this kind of ugly yellow. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to black, and I'm going to change the text to black as well. Awesome. Uh, so we have our drop down and I'm just going to change also this um, placeholder that we have here. So choose a gender. Awesome. And now what we need to do is we need to filter this data set using this drop down. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this mock data set, which we added in the previous tutorial. And I'm going to go into settings. And I'm going to go down here to the filter section. And then I'm going to add in a filter. And I'm going to filter the gender field. And the condition is that the gender field should be equal to another user input element. And it's going to be this drop down. So I'm going to go ahead and add that filter in. And now you'll see that if I go here into preview mode, and I select a gender such as male, then my table will filter and only show males. And if I go ahead and click female, then it'll only show females. So this is a pretty good start. Um, it's a bit of an issue because we don't have a way to remove this filter at the moment. Um, so let's add a button that will go ahead and clear this filter. Um, so I'm going to go and add an element. And this is going to be a button. And then I am going to say filter. Uh, sorry, I'm going to say clear filter. And then we can go ahead and connect this to our mock data set. And the click action will be to filter input values. Sorry, reset input values. OK, awesome. And let's go ahead and try that out. So I'm going to go into preview mode. And I'm going to select a gender. So let's select male. And now you can see that it's all filtered uh, by male. And then if I click clear filter, then the filter has cleared. Okay, so that's how to set up a basic filter and how to clear a filter. And you can see that it's pretty simple to set up a drop down based filter, but we're kind of limited in terms of what filters we can add because I can't really add an input based filter. So let me just show you that I'm going to go. And when I say input, I mean a text input. So I'm going to go over here and add a text input. And let's say I wanted to filter by the value of this text input. So I would go here to the mock data set and go to settings. And then I want to go add a filter, but you'll see here, when I select user input, and I have no option to select 
that text input element. Okay, so we're really uh, limited here to drop downs. Maybe there are other inputs that uh, also work with these table filters. You'll kind of have to try it out and see, but we do have some limitation, then that's really where the Velo is going to come in and help us uh, overcome some of these things. So that's uh, really all for this tutorial uh, today. I know it was very simple and very short, um, but I think that it is a very cool functionality to be able to add filters uh, without Velo. But as we saw, we have some limitations, and that's why next video we're going to start talking about how to control our tables using Velo. So if you're interested in that, make sure to tune in for the next video, and I'll see you next time.